It's hereby given of a regular meeting of the City of San Angelo Development Corporation to be held on December 13, 2023 at 8.30 a.m. at the McNeese Convention Center, South Meeting Room, 501 Real Concha Drive, San Angelo, Texas, for the purpose of considering the following agenda items. Uh, number one, we'll call the meeting to order. It is 8.30, and uh, please bow your heads and join me in prayer. Father God, we come to you grateful and humble, and uh, thank you for the many blessings you bestow on us. We uh, ask you to guide our hearts and our minds as we govern over our, our city and our community and help us guide us to make wise decisions and be good stewards of this uh, great responsibility you have uh, given us. We ask that during this holiday season, uh, there'll be brothers and sisters in need of food and shelter, and please uh, take care of them, comfort them, and bring joy uh, to those of us and, and those around us and help us serve this great community that we love uh, each and every day. And thank you for your many blessings. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Uh, number three, public comment. Issues or items that are not on the agenda may be raised by the public at this time. Citizens should speak from the podium, begin by stating their name and limit remarks to less than three minutes. Board members may request that a discussed item be placed on a future agenda. The board takes public comments on all regular agenda items during the discussion of those items. Do we have any public comment? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to number four, the consent agenda. A, consider approving the necessary corporation disbursement. B, consider approving the regular meeting minutes of November 15, 2023. C, consider approving the October 2023 financials. D, consider approving a resolution supporting the planning and construction of the future Interstate Highway 27 in Texas. And E, consider a resolution authorizing the investment policy for the City of San Angelo Development Corporation Fund for 2024. Do we have a motion? Okay. Do we have a second? Second. All right, we have a... First by Director Rodriguez, second by Director Mantuf. Any discussion? None. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. Thank you. We'll move on to item five, the regular agenda. A, consider approving the proposed Costa DC meeting calendar for 2024. Presentation by Nora Navarez. Good morning, board. Let me get this caught up right quick. So before you, I have a list of all of the COSA DC meetings. Uh, for our viewers, the meetings are held the fourth Wednesday of each month. But as you can see, for November and December, I bumped those up either on November, I bumped it to the third week. And then December, uh, that's the second week. So I'm not sure if that's good or if we want to visit that before that meeting comes up and if we need to re- schedule that meeting at a different time, that's fine. But for now, this is what I have for you. Okay. Any discussion or comments from the board? Good. No? Okay, I think it looks good. And I know obviously we're meeting here today because of the change in the schedule and the room not being available where we normally meet. That is correct. So these would be already reserved for probably. The, oh, well, if the East Mezzanine is not reserved, in November and December, then you're and looking at coming there. over here for those okay. two months. So. Okay. Sounds good. We get the comfy chairs again in November and December. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Do we need uh, a motion on yes, that to approve? Please. Okay. Can we get one from the board? So move. Okay. Do we have a second? A second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Okay, so we have first by Director Mahaffey, second by Director Gomez. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. All right, mm -hmm. thank you. We'll move on to B, discuss amending the Affordable Housing Assistance Program guidelines to include rehabilitation of structures as an eligible activity and obtain board direction. Uh, good morning, board. Um, so if I get board this about. working. Hey, how about that? It works. <clears throat> um, just to get started, here's a uh, quick overview of the program. 
as you know, my department uh, manages and oversees the $335,000 um, annually ga annual gap financing program uh, for new construction. But more importantly, uh, the program supports neighborhood revitalization. Now, as long as the funds are used uh, for affordable housing to, to benefit low, moderate income citizens based on HUD guidelines, the board can um, uh, design a program as they wish, and, um, and it can include other, uh, other types of uh, uh, programs such as rehabs, uh, rentals, those kind of things, as long as it's eligible based on HUD guidelines. Over the years, uh, we have made some changes to the guidelines. Um, so there is precedence in amending the program. Initially, the uh, guidelines consisted of $40,000 uh, gap financing plus closing costs. At the time, we had uh, 200 tax foreclosed properties that we sold for $750 under the Urban Redevelopment Program. Uh, however, those tax lots uh, quickly uh, were sold and we couldn't find them. They, were, they, were, they, were become, they became unavailable. Uh, so, uh, we had to change the guidelines to, in to include $5,000 for lot purchase. Uh, fortunately, construction and property costs continue to go up. Um, so, we had to come back to the board last year and we amended the uh, guidelines once again uh, to include $50,000 gap financing and $15,000 for a lot purchase. And that was the last time we amended the, the guidelines. Let's give a little bit of history. Um, this slide shows uh, what the funds have been allocated for over the years. Uh, besides the main uh, AHAP program, which is the GAP financing program, uh, the board has allocated funds for rehabs and low-income housing tax credit projects, which are affordable rentals. So we've established a precedence there as well. Uh, even with uh, all the positives that new home construction provides, uh, there are still a bunch of issues that we have to deal with. Uh, first, the continual rising cost of construction is forcing us to consider raising the gap once again in the future. Uh, that's if we continue with new home construction. Uh, secondly, it's becoming increasingly difficult to find credit-worthy home buyers that will meet back, uh, bank underwriting uh, standards. So uh, we have to be more selective, uh, which has led us to consider alternatives such as rehabs. Here's a few before and after pictures to kind of give you an idea the impact of a rehab has in a neighborhood. Before and after. So you can see that it has a, a, a great impact on the, um, on the curb appeal of a neighborhood. Uh, so uh, staff is asking for, the, for consideration to perhaps amend the guidelines once again to include rehabs and maybe um, um, multifamily rental units if they're made available, for example. Um, Anyway, uh, we're asking here for your direction, see where, where the board would like to go with this program. Uh, but again, I think rehabs is a good way of doing that. We would, we would probably focus on siding, uh, windows, roofing, just exterior, again, because it's part of neighborhood revitalization. Um, so that would be, a, I think, go a long way to helping revitalize these targeted neighborhoods. So I'm asking for direction from the, from the board. Any comments or feedback? For the board, I've got a question. Who's actually doing the work of this painting, windows, siding? Well, these pictures came from the uh, Blitz. Uh, we had okay. professionals. In fact, some of the money that Coastal DC allocated, those were the pictures from the, the Coastal DC funded neighborhood Blitz. Um, they were, we get professionals to go in there and do the siding, replace the siding. Uh, we have professionals do the, the windows and the roof, uh, if need be. And then we have volunteers to come in and do the painting. Um, but in this case, it would be uh, strictly contractors. Uh, we have uh, a list of contractors that we use on a regular basis. Uh, they're vetted through the city. They have the insurance. They have the experience. And that's, that's what we would use. So I mean, we could probably continue using volunteers. Uh, in fact, uh, we're doing a modified um, 
blitz based on the lesson your approval uh, a couple of months back, which you want to start in the fall. And we do have a group that's interested in helping paint to kind of uh, continue the blitz uh, concept. And that's what we're going to do this time. Uh, but, but again, we could we could use volunteers, but we would have uh, uh, would have um, professionals do the hard work, do the heavy lifting. This is just a perspective of, of my own, I'm sure, but it seems like there's a lot of new construction in San Angelo that is not, uh, has not yet been purchased. Uh, or how are we doing, Max, you would know this as, as well as anyone, how, is, uh, how are we sitting as far as available new construction? Not a whole lot, to tell you the truth. I mean, there's a lot of construction going on. Uh, in my experience, a lot of those are selling pretty quickly. Okay. I mean, the price point, um, because of construction costs, like Bob mentioned, keeps going up. So, uh, you know, it's hard to find anything under 200000 really, anymore. I mean, I think, uh, you, know, some, you know, some of the more affordable, you know, uh, constructions are still pushing 170, 180 a square foot. So, you know, $200,000, you're getting maybe 1200 um, square feet, and in order to keep the costs lower, they're not they're doing carports maybe instead of a garage, uh, just to keep costs down and, and so forth. So, and like Bob mentioned, it's hard to find the lot. I just had somebody uh, reach out to me this week looking for for available lots, low cost, and good luck finding anything under you know twenty thousand anymore, uh, anywhere, you know, uh, basically. So, uh, you know, average sales price is about the two forty, two fifty. So uh, for in, in general, you know, in, in San Angelo, a real estate market. So um, new construction for two, 200 to 250 um, is what they're building, but it's, it's gone usually as soon as you build it. <laughs> so is um, the demand for, uh, for new construction like we've been funding, is that waning? Well, the, 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 big, the big problem, I think, for our clientele, our baseline anyway, is that they get, they get priced out of the, uh, the, whole, the housing market as it stands right now. Uh, so we have to kind of make, uh, we have to provide some subsidies, of course, and that's what this program is about. Um, they, um, these, they we're talking about new home, you know, relatively younger individuals that, that qualify for that small uh, window uh, to get qualified because you can't make more than a certain amount to get the mortgage, but you can't make, uh, but you can't, you can't make less because otherwise you won't get the, the, the mortgage itself. So this is a very small window we're talking about for our clients. Uh, Oh. Nope, there we go again. Just kind of have to walk around a little bit, I guess. Start making ex do exercises or something <laughs> up here. Uh, uh, anyway, um, so the problem is that we don't, they, they want new home construction, of course. Uh, where do these people go? Where do they go buy a home, uh, a brand new home? And the answer is difficult for them uh, because of all these things. Uh, the cost of, the, the rising cost of new home construction. Um, the market is uh, enable for them. They're, they're just, they're just not, it's not there for them. So we have to try to get them into new homes. Now, is that, um, does everybody have to have a brand new home construction? Well, no, it doesn't have to. I mean, uh, someone that, that wants to get into a home, what's the first time you do? You usually buy an existing home, do you not? Mm -hmm. That's typically what we do. Um, I did anyway. I'm not sure people buy for a brand new home, uh, so that's why that's why we kind of uh, we're considering perhaps something like this. Uh, so they're so when they do buy a home, uh, it may not be a new home, but it'll be a decent home. So the, this would be another way of going uh, if you want to consider the this. remodeling and the uh, renewals that you showed us a few moments ago. What's the average cost of doing that work? Okay. The siding and the well, uh, that's a good question because we started uh, relatively uh, relatively cheap, about five thousand per unit. Now we're going up to about twelve thousand. Okay, so well under. Oh, the oh yes, yes, it'd be, yeah, it'd be way under. It'd be under the way under the forty, obviously. Um, and that's where I say about twelve to fifteen thousand. We're talking about depending on how much work we have to do, how big the, the house is, and all that. Um, if you want to do the, uh, uh, we want to re-roof it and and siding and windows. We're talking pushing, we're pushing seventeen, eighteen thousand. So Bob, I've got a couple of questions, and I, I'm excited about this program, and I'm excited about the out of the box thinking to try to, you know, help more people and 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 stretch the the budget. So a couple of questions. One, another three thirty five thousand is allocated from the ballot side, and and that's you know on the ballot. I'm wondering, do we have any latitude to increase that if we so choose? You know, is that something that 
is like if we wanted to increase that amount, do we have that latitude to do that? Um, I'm not sure that we can do that on the ballot side. I think we could do something on the economic development side, but we want to run to that. Yeah. I, so for the ballot side, I think you'd have to go through the election to change that. But Excuse there me. is still, uh, as an authorized project in the act itself, um, affordable housing. So mm -hmm. I think you would take that through just like we do any other project, but it would just be like a one-time deal. Um, okay. But you could do that. Okay. So that's, that's number one. And two, as you mentioned, what we've done historically for the new constru construction is subsidize the cost through that gap financing. Uh, and then as, you know, Brandon uh, experienced like about a year ago or so, we, we ran into uh, some clients who had some, you know, uh, financial challenges and we, you know, we're, we're in danger of foreclosing. Uh, and, oh, yeah, awesome. Good, yeah. But, you know, so, so obviously that puts us in a risk, you know, position. I know that money gets forgiven uh, as, you know, time goes on. So the money that's spent on these rehabs, the 12000 15000 uh, is that forgiven as well? That's just a yes. one time, right? So, no, it was, we, so we don't, yeah, we don't forgive everything. So, so no. potentially, if we, we could rehab three houses at, say, even twelve, fifteen thousand for subsidizing one new construction on the gap financing at at a at forty or fifty thousand, potentially, right. uh, and and mitigate some of that risk with them having to pay it back, uh, you know, or, or pay, you know, be in a second position, quite honestly, because we're not we're forgiven that anyway. Um, so, and with the rising costs, I, I mean, I think this is uh, a very responsible and, and uh, uh, effective approach, in my yeah. personal opinion. You know, another, another, yeah, another uh, op opportunity, perhaps another program design could be if uh, for us to buy existing homes, flip them, and sell them ourselves. Mm -hmm. The problem comes, we, in fact, we used to do that. Uh, the city, we used to, we had, we had an individual that used to do that for us, but uh, you have to have a certification to do that. And we, we lost our certification, and so therefore we have to do everything deferred loans. Mm -hmm. We can't go ask, we can't go set up a, a loan program uh, for these things. We'd have to, but well, we could probably outsource that somehow. Mm -hmm. uh, and that'd be an option. Uh, you know, we just go out and flip them. Right. And we have, uh, we'll get one of our contractors, probably Galley, because they're the ones that do the cheap, cheap, mm -hmm. cheapest, mm -hmm. and then go out there and buy them for us, fix them, and then we have a, we have a long list of home buyers. Mm -hmm. So they're not new homes, but they're still nice homes. Uh, they help with the revitalization process, perhaps not as much as a new home construction, but you saw the pictures. The pictures are kind of show you that these make a big impact right. on the neighborhood. Yeah. So that's another option, too. We, we, we haven't really fleshed that out, but that could be a possibility. Mm -hmm. How many cases have you found where it's lipstick on a pig? I mean, you, the, the outside of the home now looks just fabulous, but you walk into it and it's dilapidated and uh, plumbing is bad and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. We actually have programs for that. We have a different program. My, my uh, uh, community development block grants, the grant funds that I get from HUD, that we, we have programs to help the inside. Okay. Emergency repairs for, for, for uh, pl uh, plumbing issues, ADA bathrooms, electrical repairs. We don't do a lot of cosmetics. We don't do sheetrock, for example. Uh, we don't do that part. Uh, but we do, we do enough to keep the house safe and uh, safe from hazards. Uh, so we, we, would, we would pick you back off of, uh, of our programs to help a house. We go into a, now we flip it, they would, we would flip it to a standard. Uh, we would make sure everything works, everything is, is, uh, is new, not totally new, but it'd be, a, it'd be a workable, everything would work obviously, obviously, so. Well, this all makes great sense to me. Are we ready to approve this as a project? I do have a question. Not, not quite yet. No. Uh, okay. We're not, we're, we're just direction right now. We'll come back next year, probably in January, February, with a, right. with a guideline, with a pr presentation on how, what exactly we want to look at and how we want to uh, execute that program. Yes, sir. You have on there, Bob, look at other options such as multifamily rental units. Who, who are the owners of the multifamily rental units where yeah. you would be doing some sort of rehab or okay. upkeep? too, because you want guideline on that, because wouldn't that be the responsibility of the owner of the yeah. multifamily rental unit? This would be uh, for a nonprofit. Uh, for example, Galilee has got, a, has got a, has, has earmarked 
some funding to purchase a small um, I'm familiar with that. Oh yeah, like eight unit apartment complex for special special needs individuals. I think uh, individuals that have they have gone out, they have uh, graduated from the uh, from the system, if you will, from the foster system, and they're on their own and they can't find a place. Uh, uh, they age out, unfortunately. When you age out, uh, you they just kick you out, and you're you're out. You're on your own. Um, no support. No place to go. No funding, no money. So this program is going to help. Is going to do that. So we're probably going to come to the board, even if it's just for a one-time amount. We're going to come to you asking you to help us fund that program too. It's an important program, but it would be a nonprofit. It wouldn't be for uh, for the, for uh, you know private owners uh, that they, we kind of lose because you have to control that. You have to control who goes in because of the HUD guidelines. You have to manage. You have to vet the clients. Everybody has to be low, moderate income. Uh, so we would not want to have a, a private person, uh, owner, uh, making making sure to take care of that process. We have to we have to we have to do that ourselves. Okay, thank you. Yeah. So, a lot of opportunities to change this uh, program uh, to make it look to kind of fit our needs right now. Uh, like I said, new home construction is great. I mean, it's it's but it's getting more expensive and it's getting more difficult to to. Uh, find home buyers to meet our criteria. Mm -hmm. okay, awesome. Brandon, did you want to give that update now or did you want to do that? Yeah, right now? sure. Uh, so of the three that we had paid the mortgage payment, um, one's still in bankruptcy and probably will be for a while, but I'm still uh, getting notices and stuff on that. Um, the other two, as of Monday, they're fully paid off. So we did recoup those payments we made on those two. All right, good deal. And then we, although we haven't really had many uh, foreclosures, we've had a lot of threats lately. Um, I think we've only had really one over the over the years. So it's, it's actually a pretty good, pretty good rate uh, for us. Um, but I think it'll get worse. It's going to get worse yeah. because it's. So, so on that note, I know we we had challenges with the lender once they switched uh, companies or got bought out. Uh, the lender we were using. So, um, I guess if if we do continue to support the gap you know, financing, then uh, are we, I guess, going to pursue other local lenders and see? Yeah, know, we would. And, and we always, we're always doing that. We're always trying to reach out to individuals that want to do it. But again, the, the um, uh, it's kind of unique that you have to have uh, um, escrow accounts internal. You have to manage that. And, and if you don't have an internal escrow program, it's hard to sell that loan out in the, out in the market like, norm, like normally. Um, so it's it be, people don't like to do that uh, for some reason because we carry a loan. So yeah. when you sell a the note, there's a there's a lien on it, our lien, oh, right. and nobody wants to buy one with a lien with an extra yeah. lien on it. Right. It just this just doesn't. It's it really not needs to be like an in-house loan for them that they need to yeah. keep in-house and not sell. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so it won't the, conform to the guidelines. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So anyway, uh, if, 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 if you're all uh, comfortable with this, we'll come back to you with a proposal, an actual proposal to change the guidelines, what the guidelines would look like, uh, what the program design would, would be, and at that point you would approve it uh, if you guys are comfortable with this direction. Okay. If, uh, Max, if I could, Bob, I'm sorry to spring this on you. I just had an idea. For You mentioned uh, a nonprofit working with clients who have special needs. Is there a another? Is there is there a requirement that to be considered housing that the resident has to live there for a certain period of time? In other words, if there was a transitional um, occupancy situation where the clients had special needs, operated by a nonprofit. I mean, what sort of residency or length of stay would be necessary for qualification? Do we know that, or is that something for the three of us, you and Brandon and I, to work well, on? I could, I could tell you that uh, it, it, how you craft your design, if you want to consider it as a transitional, uh, we, we decide what that is. It could be for 12 months, it could be 18 months, it could be something else. As long as they're el income eligible, uh, I think you meet the good, the the guy the the, the HUD guidelines and and requirements. So okay. um, there's really no there's not the, a lot of the income eligibility might be the challenge for that's what it is. It's it's the eligibility, but okay. otherwise you can pretty def you can design any way you want to. All right, thank you. All right, no other questions. Thank you very much, Bob, for 
uh, everything you do and for your information. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Time. We'll come back to you uh, in the next couple of months. Sounds good. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. We'll move on to item C. Consider accepting the 2022 City of San Angelo Development Corporation audit presentation by Michael Muncy. Morning, board. Morning. Um, a client audit was conducted for CoCDC's contract activity for fiscal year 22. There was a total of 22 uh, contracts reviewed. 13 of them were BREP agreements, or BREP projects, and nine of them were business plan competition winners. Uh, there was a little more than $2 million dispersed out to miscellaneous vendors for the assigned projects. At the conclusion of the audit, there was only one finding. Uh, business had failed to submit a current certificate of insurance. Um, staff had reached out multiple times but was unsuccessful. As for the rest of the contracts, they were in compliance and uh, no action was taken. I do have a recommendation to the board co to consider. In previous years, uh, businesses have submitted their biannual reports late. And so as it states in the business plan competition agreements, um, the first biannual reports are submitted to staff on or before 30 days after the six month anniversary of the effective date of the agreement. After that, reports are periodically submitted uh, six months for the three-year period. Uh, my recommendation is to consider adding a deadline to the reporting requirements after that initial uh, first reporting period. So with that, do you have any questions? We would, Max, what we would do is uh, follow up with uh, Michael on that recommendation and Brandon and work that into a draft proposed, a draft agreement for the next business plan competition cycle. Okay. It's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Specific deadlines are not a bad idea. I know that we struggle to get paperwork in after a project has gone through and it's in its uh, compliance period. So it's a good idea even if it did come from the auditor. <laughs> <laughs> Would your recommendation be that it, it follow the same calendar that the others follow the every six months and, and like that? At least a 30 to 60 day window um, at the end of that six month period, yes sir. Okay. What is the, what is the ultimate penalty for not submitting that? Uh, there's really no repercussions in the agreements um, from what I read, but uh, maybe that's something we could also consider. I mean, it, if they totally didn't submit a report, I mean, we'd send them a mean letter saying they were in default and potentially, you know, recouping, you know, the funds that we paid them back. But um, hopefully that can get to that point. Yeah. And usually whenever we have these kind of, or whenever uh, Coastal DC staff has this trouble, they usually do submit it, but it's later on. But we eventually get that paperwork. But usually, you know, we've given them money first, so it's not like we could withhold funds, right, until we get it because it's a three-year, mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. And what, what is your audit schedule? How often are you auditing these? Uh, usually audit them yearly. Annually? Okay. Yeah, and, and again, so what do, just from, again, if there's no repercussions, we've already given them the money, if, you know, or we give them money as a reimbursement, right? Because they'll spend it on whatever they, we're gonna spend it and then we reimburse them, right? Uh, for that is how it works. So then, I mean, is there a need, I'm just throwing it out there, for those reports or what, what, what are we doing with that information? We're collecting it and then what are we doing with their, those reports anyway? Because we've already given them the money, they've already spent it. What, what's our benefit to collecting that data? What are we doing with that information? Well, mostly when they are submitting for a request for their funding, mm -hmm. if uh, I guess what we what I could or ask, I'll get with Brandon to see if if I've not received documents that I've needed for the first uh, six months mm -hmm. that we not give them the remaining funding because they still have three years to use their, that money. Right. So if they're not in compliance, maybe we can just hold off until they've submitted their right. requirement needs. No, I, I get that. Mm -hmm. But if they've already, if they spend it two yeah. months out mm -hmm. and they give us whatever they need to, they give us receipts, they, why, why are we getting, why, why you know, we? I would say as a business owner, if I, you know, received it, and I think we had a complaint a couple of years ago with, with somebody that had, 
you know, questions about some of the reporting that we were asking for uh, is why do you need my information, you know, two years from now when I already spent the money and I did what I did to earn it? Mm -hmm. I've got reimbursed for it, so why are you asking me for my, my money or my reports two years from now? Um, uh, yes. Max, I'm, I'm going to... I'm not going to accuse you of bugging the offices, but <laughs> we just recently did have a conversation about what makes sense for a post-project uh, reporting period and reports mm -hmm. from the clients. What, uh, what makes sense from a uh, contracting and follow-up pers perspective? What makes sense from a managing how much bureaucratic workload we create for ourselves gotcha. and for the mm -hmm. clients? And so uh, you might get an invitation to a meeting to talk about that mm. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. that is exactly the kind of thing we were talking about. What, what do we do that creates the necessity for a long-term post-project, post-contract right. execution follow-up period that creates an audit burden, a, an administrative follow-up burden, Absolutely. paperwork reporting burden that was... The, the, at the heart of the finding we had this time. Right. Mm -hmm. And so um, we had that conversation, and uh, it sounds to me like it, it, it's not, we're not done having that conversation. Yeah. That, I, I agree. I it, mean, if, if I'm hearing Max right, it's, it sounds to me like it should be amended to say that it is up to a certain number of years after the project or until the sunset of the completion of the project. I mean, if the project is completed, the money was spent, the money was reimbursed, it seems to me that ought to be done. <laughs> exactly. What, what, what are we going to call victory? Right. What is our objective? Uh, I mean, if When anything, we satisfy that objective, we declare victory and Absolutely. I, mean, I, I see that it could potentially be a disincentive for people to apply for the Small Business Competition Program if the, if the reporting requirements are burdensome you know, on, on their part. I seem to remember another uh, business plan that won the competition that never got off the ground, that uh, the money that it was intended for uh, was never spent, the construction never happened, uh, nothing was ever done uh, to go through with the plan, and in that case, you, you don't give them the money, correct? Right. 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 Yeah. And that's exactly the situation I was referring to a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because at, when they won, the construction cost was very expensive. But since, they have collected some of their money already. Mm -hmm. And then I have another one that they mm -hmm. will be getting in touch with me next week, as a matter of fact, to collect some of their funding. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it's a great opportunity. Uh, I know we had discussed about, uh, or we voted for that, right, increasing the money for the uh, business plan competition for next right. year. Mm -hmm. So I think with these findings, and I think, you know, it, it's you know a great opportunity to just revamp all of that. Okay. I mean, I think uh, obviously with Desiree at the Small Business Development Center, this is what like her second year now. I think you know mm -hmm. she's kind of um, I'd be interested in her input as well yes. um, for, for her experience and uh, good opportunity just to take a look at everything okay. we're doing. That you know on the board we talked uh, in our executive meeting about uh, all the policies in place. I think it's healthy to you know, look at that every every so often. So I think that's something else we should look at, so. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Any other comments or feedback from the board? No? All right, Michael, well, appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yeah. Thank you. All right, then we will move. Do we need a motion for that? I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So then, yeah. Is there a management response that's submitted for this? And if so, who does that? Um, we, we probably won't put anything in writing, but we agree with the idea that uh, a deadline is appropriate for follow-up paperwork. Um, however, I think we also opened a, another can of worms in that we want to examine how long that post-project reporting period should be and what should the documentation be. Um, is, does that lend itself to, or is that part of what we would say is the dire, desired outcome, creation of jobs and maintaining those jobs for three years or six years or, or whatever? If, is that a key component? 
or can uh, is there a shorter follow-up compliance kind of a time frame associated with that so uh, I guess the official response is we support the recommendation and I think we will find it somewhere in the document documentation however we also might modify or propose modifications to other elements of those requirements in that we shorten them up or tie instead of a, a standardized slate of reporting requirements we may tie the post contract reporting requirements to whatever we did decide the victory is uh, if, if it's associated with a capital investment then that's one thing but if it's job creation and retention that that might create a longer time period and a different set of documents that we won't follow up with so do you, would you like to see a specific kind of a response other than that or is that does that satisfy I was just asking what would suffice to close this audit out I mean is there a written response that's necessary or you just take direction from this board just direction from the board and then meeting internally with staff and see if there's a something we can figure out to come together and I'm sure it'll be brought back to y'all after I guess the contract will I, I think I think with regard specifically to uh, a specific deadline I, I think we since it came up as a uh, an audit finding I think we want to have a response and work with Brandon and show that Go ahead, Brandon. Well, I was gonna say, um, Nora's got me the agreements uh, for this current year, and so I wonder if we ought to have that conversation sooner rather than later yeah. and incorporate it into those, right. so. I, they'd be great to working in this year. However, when they apply, we give them a draft copy of the contract, well, and we'd be yeah. changing the terms. That's um, true. And so, to the extent that we can implement for this cycle, that'd be great. If we can't, or then, Certainly, we want to follow up I mean, for the next cycle. I guess if the re reporting requirements become less burdensome, I think they'd be probably in favor yeah. of that. But I yeah, mean, no one's going to complain that they don't have to send you know future reports or anything. But I would say so, Laura. I mean, obviously, we just finished the business plan competition recently. But when when does the process start over again as far as the application and the marketing and, and so the, forth for next year? The next kickoff. The next kickoff won't be until August, so I have plenty of time to where I can work with Brandon and we can do that. I will say that, the, as Michael said, you know, those have already received the, a copy of it. It still has not been signed, so I can work with Brandon and we can work with staff to see if there's a less reporting. You know, I've, yeah. I've, they would probably appreciate that, so. Yeah, and, and again, I think, uh, you know, um, no one's going to complain if you say, hey, instead of three years, we're only going to need two years. But I, again, I think to Rick's point, you know, before, I think once, you know, the money's been dispersed, the reports have been received, uh, you know, to get, collect future data that's not being used and, you know, not being supported in a, or submitted in a timely manner anyway, mm -hmm. seems a little redundant and un unnecessary, personally. But, so whether that's a year or three years or five years if we have to amend it where we've done in the past where the monies haven't been spent I'm okay with that I just don't see the need once it's been closed really the money's been dispersed money why are we in. asking for more mm -hmm. reports and if anything that might incentivize them to spend the money faster right knowing that they don't the reporting will stop once uh, once the project is complete mm -hmm. so um, I would say uh, as a follow-up item, I guess we could add it to the agenda just so it doesn't fall off the radar, but maybe okay. sometime between now and uh, next June to maybe just uh, have a follow-up uh, on this item. And, and again, I'm happy to meet. I like uh, that. You know, be part of, part of that, you know, meeting. But I think, you know, Desiree should be involved as small business development, Laura, of course, and, okay. uh, you know, Brandon and so forth. Um, and again, I'm happy to be involved in that conversation as well, because we don't want to disincentivize participation because it were, you know, redundant and unnecessary reporting, uh, in, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, but we want. Sound like the government. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So if we want to be pro-business, we, we know. I yes, think that's of one of those red tapes that if we could cut that, I think you know, every, that'll benefit that'll work. everybody. So. Okay. I'll get some schedule. Okay. Cool. Well, thanks again, Michael. Thank you. All right. So number six, follow up and administrative issues, uh, A, announcements and consideration of future agenda items, uh, which just kind of added one thing there. Is there anything else? 
uh, that anyone would like to see? And if not, then uh, A, discuss scheduling the affordable housing tour, which uh, we had scheduled but uh, weren't able to execute on uh, about a month ago or so. There we go. I actually um, looked at the calendar to provide you all a couple of dates here, so you might check your calendars to see if one of these dates might work for you all. And if not, um, as we had discussed prior, we could also do the tours. Bob can also do that and take you in the truck and we'll just take you all around. Yeah, I would say for me the ninth and the eleventh look good. Uh, the fourth would have to if we're doing yeah. it in the morning. Uh, if it's the fourth, the afternoon would be better at this point for me. But and that's going to be hard to get consensus. Yeah. Okay. The last time we talked about this, we talked about separating it from a meeting date. Right. Yeah. Just we could also time. pile it on to a meeting date if we're going to have a short. You know, we're going to be done pretty quickly here in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. If we had the bus sitting outside, we could still have a reasonable intrusion into the calendar and and uh, and get it done on a meeting date if that suits you. Yeah. If it looks like it's going to be a short meeting in January, we could. And I, I think it's better to leave it separate. Just I'm good with in that. case things go longer or what have you. In my opinion, I think we talked about that in the past too, right? Just if you put it um, like late morning and you feed me. You're guaranteed to get me on that bus. <laughs> we can we can make that arrangement. So, does anyone else have any conflicts or that? Uh, January 9th and 11th had the conflict, so I'm only available the fourth. Okay. Well, the fourth would work for me, but it would be in the afternoon, so we could do maybe uh, a lunch meeting and then go or that. Well, a couple of options. We can break it up and. And if we got a big group, we can do a catch-up tour with one or two, um, or we can search for more dates. Whatever suits the board, we're good with. Yeah, that works too. Or we could break it up into two dates. That way, whoever can make one or the other. You want to shoot for the fourth then, and then, or shoot for another date? I would say maybe if the fourth, if that works, as the first date, and then maybe the eleventh as a follow-up. Anybody that those who can't, can't make it, make it yeah. we'll we'll do a follow-up. We have a makeup exam. Yeah, there you go. So somebody give me the, the questions first, right? On the, whoever goes on the fourth. <laughs> okay. Okay. That'll work. Fourth and the eleventh, and then let us know. Thank you, Nora. Okay. Thank you. A any uh, requests for um, where we go for lunch? I don't know. I don't even know what I want for breakfast yet today. So <laughs> I mean, we'll cross that bridge. I'm sure we'll figure something out. All right. Cool. Well, then, uh, if nothing else, then I will entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All right. It's 913. Uh, all those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you, everybody. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. See you all next year. <laughs>